Bro, this is gonna be such a cool video. What's up guys i'm back with another video um i'm pretty glad to say that i got the bug uh the youtube bug back it's been a really long time since i edited movies and now i'm putting some effort into this and i hope you guys are enjoying them so in this video i'm working on joe ferrara's uh cement mixer i think it's a 1968 it's a uh it's a truck that they that they did a complete uh, restoration on about they completed it four years ago and this is going to be a, a, over week uh, multiple weekends this entire detail is going to take place so in this video you're going to see i'm working on the wheels right now and you're going to tackle spoke wheels or painted truck wheels the same way you would car wheels i use a uh iron remover it's the stuff that turns purple when it gets iron particles on these trucks, the brakes are tremendous. It's nothing like a car. It's got huge drum brakes. The shoes are tremendous. Lots of iron comes out of there, especially on white wheels. You don't want to see anything. So the way I tackle these wheels is I spray the iron remover on first. Let it sit for about 30 seconds usually. Then I come in and put the heavy degreaser on top of that, which was a Chemex, the new degreaser Bob just came out with. And uh, I let those kind of just sit and start to break down everything on the surface. Right here, I'm using a detail brush and I'm going in all the, the weird areas. Basically, the uh, I'm not an expert on spoke wheels, but whatever, it's like a clamp, I guess, that holds the spokes to the rim. And that's a, it's a kind of hard. You're never going to get in there with the microfiber. So you got to use a detail brush to get in there, go around all the nuts. Uh, on the hub, you're going to go around the nuts. Here I have a dollar store wash mitt. It's honestly the perfect size from Dollar Tree. It's this little tiny wash mitt, but it works really well for wheels. Spray a little degreaser on there. There you go. I'm working around the hub. I'll let you guys watch for a little while. I'll be back. So this is the front axle of the tandem. Uh, this had a wheel seal that was leaking at one point and the back part of the wheel where I'm using the wheel woolly right now was caked with grease. You really can't see it from this video and I was doing my best to set the camera up so I wasn't blocking the view but still allowing you guys to see everything. And uh, you could probably see if you look in the background, the, uh, the black, that's dripping down on the inner inner barrel of the wheel. This detail brush I'm using here, I got a coal at uh, not Coles. I'm saying uh, at Lowe's. It's basically a paintbrush. I think I spent about eight dollars on it, and uh, it works amazing. That I haven't been able to find a detail brush that was this size, and, and on the trucks you need something a little bit bigger. It works really good. Occasionally pieces of the, of the uh, bristles fall out, but uh, it works fine. It's soft pretty much seems as soft as the other detail brushes I get on Amazon but I'll put links in the description for everything in case someone's interested so detail brush on all the, the intricate areas where you're not going to get your hand in there with a mitt like this you just work around the iron remover you can see turning red really get the, the wheels back to white and it did a great job 
I spray degreaser on the tires and go around it with the drill brush. But uh, the amount of tire shine that was on here, we actually had to take a razor blade after it off video and scrape the sidewalls of the tire. It was coming off like uh, it was just big chunks of rubber. It looked like it wasn't rubber. It was just big chunks of old tire shine. It was disgusting, honestly. It was like mud. And just so you guys know, this entire video is, is sped up four times. That's how long this is taking. Each one of these wheels that you see me cleaning was about 15 minutes long. I'm using a Kranzel 1322 pressure washer. And uh, we have hot water at the shop that we plumb right through it. Not that hot, maybe about like 100 degrees. Nice warm water. All right, I'll be back. So right here I have the uh, Chemex degreaser. I have that foam gun sprayed, uh, filled up basically with one quarter degreaser from Chemex, full strength, the rest water. And I have the, uh, the knob, the dilution knob on the top of the foam cannon at uh, the strongest setting. So I spray down the entire frame with the degreaser. Now I have a squirt bottle where this, I have a, a three to one ratio with the degreaser in there. It's gonna be more concentrated. I spray it right into my brush and I agitate as many areas as I can reach with the detail brush. And this is a, uh, a wheel brush, a mother's wheel brush, this long handled one. And this is how I tackle this frame. This is self-explanatory. I'm not gonna talk right now. I'm just gonna let you guys watch it. So right here, you can see that the struggle's real. Um, when I do Angelo's trucks, I do wheel-off detailing before a truck show. Unfortunately, right here, I, I, I'm not able to do that. So you see me trying to, like, squeeze in, and it's very awkward. My shoulder is killing me today. I'm doing this video the day after I did this. If I could get all these wheels off and have the truck jacked up on the frame, I'd get every little area. But uh, next time I go back there... The truck will be dry. I'm going to go underneath there with the creeper and some uh, solvent-based cleaners, and I'm going to get all the grease gone that's uh, that's left over. But you can see how hard it is to uh, to fit in here. And this transit mixture, it's, the frame is an actual I-beam. It's not even like a double frame or a triple frame, like a C-frame now. This was a real I-beam. Two I-beams that run all the way across. It's got 65,000-pound rears on this truck. Uh, the tires are 12R, 24 5 They're tremendous. There's nothing cool in that. All right, so right here I got the, again, Chemex degreaser. In the foam cannon, I'm going to coat the entire barrel as it's spinning. Uh, my phone fell over. It was really windy. I had it on the tripod. And now Joe just let me know it fell over, and I realized it wasn't filming the right way. So I have to fix that real quick so you guys can see everything. All right, so the whole barrel's coated in the degreaser. The next step you want to do, this is what I find works best for me. I got the degreaser on there. Now I take, uh, this is, I'm using Chemex uh, soap. This is going to be Liquid X. I'm going to coat right on top of the degreaser with that, with that uh, Liquid X car soap. You can use anything that you want. I like Chemex. Good products. 
and you're gonna see me apply this right over the top. And all this does, it lets the degreaser sit on there and it holds the degreaser to the barrel a little bit longer. This is again, is four times speed. This took 25 minutes, this video that you're watching right here, the barrel spinning. If you just work, obviously you just kind of see where you start and you just work that the width of the brush. And you, you won't have any missed spots. And here comes Joe, he's helping out. You know, the big trucks are awesome. Sometimes it just takes, it's a long time. It's a big job. You really, having multiple people is key. When I did this full time for three years, I always had two guys working with me. And you just need, even if they can't do the, the really important stuff, you need bodies to help you set up, break down. Truck detailing is a whole different animal. And no matter what, I've been around a lot of good detailers. But my work has always been consistent because I do the really important stuff on everything. And I think that's what's always going to separate you. It might not be the best way to think business-wise. You know, I'm doing this part-time again. It is what it is. But when you love to do something and you do the important stuff yourself, it's always going to look your way. And people know the difference. here I'm just going to uh, off camera I had cut it out I foamed down the back of the truck and I was just getting some of this dust and there was some more like particles on there getting this stuff off and I got to say honestly using this Kranzel pressure washer I bought this two years ago or no not even maybe about a year ago I bought this Kranzel it's two gallons a minute I put a 2.5 orifice tip on it and uh, I got 1500 PSI out of it and it felt amazing. You know, my big pressure washer is four and a half gallons a minute, 3000 PSI, which I'm actually gonna raise up to 3500. But this little Kranzel, when I'm working by myself, you can see it in the background, that little blue thing on the ground. It's amazing, it makes zero noise. You barely even know what's going on. You could think clear. Whenever I have a Honda engine or a generator next to me, it's like a countdown in my head that drives me crazy after a while. So to have this, I can really work in peace. And I think going forward in my detailing, it's kind of how I'm going to work. I'm going to do smaller jobs or jobs where I can take my time and really just dial stuff in the way I want to do it. And I'm happier doing it this way, to be honest with you guys. So now this is one of the main things on this truck. This is four times speed. And if you look at my face, I didn't realize at the time because I'll just keep working, but my shoulder was killing me. And I woke up this morning, I, I have a torn labrum in my right shoulder. And I think this just aggravated horribly. So what I'm doing here is removing orange overspray that got on these white fenders. 
and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I use clay. It's a medium grade clay. I'll put the link in the description to Amazon. And uh, I went through basically one full bar for both of these fenders. Washed them. I applied some uh, Liquid X from a rag and then I would take some of the Chemex degreaser and put that on there, a couple squirts, and I would rub it out. And you can see all the orange on there. So I'm gonna let you guys watch this part. I'll give you guys a tip definitely if you're working outside and it's cold out like right here it's about 50 degrees that orange solo cup is filled with burning hot water because once this clay gets on the fender it really just gets very tough it's hard to knead and I constantly have to flip this thing at the end of this when it was done there was orange paint coming out of the clay and look I'm being aggressive in this I know I am I'm using a lot of pressure because it was very stubborn but I knew at the end of this, I was going over with the rotary and a dual action, it's single stage paint. We're able to get this right back to how it should look. You know, just don't go above your, your education or your skill level. When you're doing something, you won't get in trouble. This is a good view because it really shows you how much orange overspray was on the white fenders. They were terrible. You know, you got to really take the time and mask everything off and uh, try to avoid this stuff. It could be a pain in the butt. So this is the lap, last clip in the video and uh, this was the first day I got to put these to the test. I bought DeWalt cordless uh, polishers. I got a rotary polisher, variable speed, and I got a dual action polisher. And I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of, of these type of machines. I have about six variable speed corded, the ones you plug into the wall, uh, polishers that you could use for paint. And I have uh, two DeWalt corded polishers, variable speeds. I have four Roops machines, dual actions. So I've used the good stuff. And these made my life so easy. It was like night and day. I bought three five amp hour batteries. I have two fast chargers. And uh, I only had to recharge one battery, the dual action uses a little bit more uh, battery than the, the rotary 
I actually don't even know if I have the dual action on, on camera, but it's amazing. I, I think I'm going to probably switch to totally cordless now. I'm using a, a 3M compound. It's ACA. I can't think of the number. It's not 500. It's the less aggressive one. Cutting compound worked amazing. I'm using a 3M yellow wool pad. And uh, after this, I went over this with a um, the dual action DeWalt with a five inch Lake Country orange pad and uh, 3D1 to, to refine the, uh, the wool polishing marks and get the no holograms in there and have it nice and smooth. That's pretty much it, you guys. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, you got another couple minutes of me doing the rotary polisher. And I will make another video soon. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Thanks. And by the way, every single thing I use in this video that I can find on Amazon, I'll link in the description. I appreciate if you guys like the video and subscribe. It means a lot. And um, that's it. Thanks again.